Hi, it's Secret Golf with Elk and Noxy, the podcast. I hope you're doing great and having a good week. It's another major week and today the KPMG Women's PGA Championship gets underway at Kemper Lakes Golf Club in Illinois, not far from Chicago. So we're going to be talking about that on the podcast. Alex's going to be here shortly and um, well, he wants to talk about the course as well because it has some special memories for him. So he'll be here in just a second. Also in a little while, I'm going to be joined by Jarena Pillar. She is at home right now with baby AJ. Now he was born in April and well I haven't spoken to her since he was born. We've had a few messages back and forth but I just want to find out about life as a mom and just how things have changed for her I'm sure dramatically but um, yeah I know Jarena is loving every single minute of it so we'll just have a catch up with her and hear what else she's been up to. I wonder if she's uh, hit a golf ball (laughs) since he's been born. I'll definitely ask her that. But first let's get right into the chat about this week's major and also how our secret golf women have been getting on recently. We have five in the field this week so uh, let's talk about it. Elk's on the phone. How are you? Good morning Diane. I am uh, pretty excited about the uh, ladies PGA this week at Kemper Lakes, a course that I remember in my past. So it's a course that you played. The 1989 PGA Championship was held there. So what, what do you remember about the course? Well, when I think about Kemper Lakes, the only thing that comes to my mind is that Payne Stewart won it uh, in 1989. And I remember he used to wear the team of the, you know, he wore knickers and he mm-hmm. represented each town that he was in on the weekend. He rep- he wore the, the hometown and he had that uh, Chicago Bears outfit. And he beat a guy named Mike Reed, who was like the straightest hitter on the tour. And I remember thinking about Payne Stewart quite a bit because 10 years after that, Diane, he was coming on his way to the my course here at Champions to play in the tour championship and Lisa and I were hosting a dinner that night and that was the night we found out that his plane uh, had crashed and we lost Payne Stewart in uh, in 99. So thinking about that today and um, thinking about Kemper Lakes, it's a, it's a very big golf course. It's, it's, I enjoy the ladies PGA championship because they, they have a tendency to go back to some of these famous courses that we get to see again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This is actually, um, it's the only the second time that this event has been held in the Chicago area. So there's a lot of buzz around the course this year and the tournament this year. And I know that you've spoken to some of our women about, you know, how it's playing and the conditions right now involving the weather. Yeah, they've had a lot. They've had a really uh, soft week so far. It's rained a lot and it's supposed to have rained a huge amount last night, but then it's supposed to clear out. I, I text with three of our girls um, and I was asking them, you know, what what was it going to be like this week for them? To, you know, what kind of challenges did Kemper Lakes, um, you know, bring to the table? And they all of them said that the, the greens are really huge. Um, and, and a lot of times, Diane, when, when you have really big greens, um, the the – the thing you worry about is you finish up leaving your ball miles away from the hole and you finish up three putt in the lot. You, it's hard to get your game when you have really big greens. And I know more about big greens than anyone because I live here at Champions, which probably has the biggest greens. You've got to get your ball uh, sort of into the quadrant of where the pin is. Even if you miss the green, for example, let's say that you have a huge green, you cut it up into four areas. Let's say one was the top left side if you, and the pin was back there. Get it back there somehow so that you can be near the pin. You know, mm-hmm. um, they all said the course is very long. They said there's uh, a lot of fairway bunkers, which are that disturbs the lady players quite a bit because they, they, I don't know if it's a mental thing or not, but it's it, it takes a fair amount of velocity to get the ball up out of fairway bunkers so that creates some some stress for the lady players I know that you asked them to kind of rank it difficulty wise out of 10 and the results were kind of varied yeah well I don't, I'm not surprised that um, Sandra Gal, who finished third last week who had four rounds in the 60s only rated it as a six and a half uh, on the difficult scale um, because she's playing so well so she must be looking at different things uh, Brittany Lynchicum who's probably one of the longest players on the tour in fact she's going to be playing with the men uh, in a couple of weeks, Diane down in Alabama, she rated it as a nine or a ten. Wow! And she's 
and she's the longest hitter out there. So she told me she hopes they they keep the tees way back and they don't play the course shorter because of this wetness. And she feels like she would have a huge advantage if uh, if they played it a long long course. Okay. Um, Gabby Lopez was more. Uh, mechanical in her, or mathematical in her thinking. She's just, she's a very um, calculated golfer. Um, she sort of takes precise driving. She says, I've got to keep it out of the fairway bunkers and the greens are super smooth. Like they're the best greens they've put it on all year, but they're really, really big. So she's highly focused on, you know, trying to do what she's got to do. The thing that I'm going to enjoy watching is seeing this old course again, Kemper Lakes and remembering that uh, it's a, it's a, it winds through uh, sort of a, an open area on the front nine, and then it goes through this really, really dense trees and undulating area on the back. So beautiful up there. So it's good to see it back in Chicago. Chicago yeah. is one of the great, great towns for golf. And as you said, you know, good memories of, of Payne Stewart too. So let's look yeah. at all of our girls. Um, Danielle Kang actually won this last year. It was her first LPGA win. And she was the eighth woman yeah. to make this her maiden victory. So I'm looking at our women that are playing. Gabby Lopez hasn't had her debut win yet. So maybe that's a good omen for her. And then last week, the LPGA tour was in Arkansas. Gabby went to University of Arkansas. First round, she posted a 63. And she did say that that she sees that her game is definitely trending towards the positive now. So you spoke to her. This could be a great week for Gabby, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she was disappointed that she um, she was in the final group the second day or, or on the weekend, and, and she did, she wasn't able to put the scores together on the weekend. But uh, sometimes when you have a 63, um, obviously your game is great. I think she's she's got to be feeling okay about her game. 63, I mean, how do you do that? Um, I'm more focused towards uh, Sandra Gow, who's had in the last three weeks, what, what's her record? She was third last week, but she also had a top top finish a couple of weeks back. Yeah. So she's really trending. Yeah, she's had three top tens so far this year. And as you say, that tied third last week in Arkansas. Sandra Gull, we spoke to her when she was at the Players' Championship here in Jacksonville. And she's, her confidence is through the roof. I, I love her. I think she's a fantastic person. But she said that. She's like, I know something good's about to happen. That's great. I love that. Um, of course, she's probably the last, she's our last person that we put on Secret Golf. And of course, we all know that when you do that, you automatically your game starts to get good, right, Diane? The only two girls that I haven't spoken to this week was, was KPMG's favorite, Stacey Lewis, and she's pregnant. She's going to stop playing the tour, I think, what, in three weeks? Mm -hmm. She's also, did you see the gender reveal that they did last week in Arkansas? So her and her husband, Garrett, who you're friends with, they're having a baby girl. You know what? I saw Garrett um, on uh, Instagram or something put up some baby Jordans that were in pink or something like that. And <laughs> I didn't realize it at the time. They they looked like they were peach colored. So I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. And now, now there you are. You've told me it's a girl. Yeah, they, they actually did a fireworks display behind the clubhouse last week, um, invited all their friends and family and then set off fireworks and they came out and they were all pink and it was a very, very cute moment. So she's due end of the year. And as you say, you know, KPMG, they're one of her biggest sponsors. They've said that they're going to support her and, and, and still fund her, I guess, throughout her pregnancy. But it's great news for Stacey. And well, last week she did well too. She's had one top 10 finish so far this year, the Volvic Championship. But it would be great to see Stacey get another win before she takes her maternity leave. Well, of course, that would, that would be great. Uh, you know, you never know how to pull for someone when they're super pregnant, right? I mean, mm -hmm. sorry, there's no such thing as super pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. But <laughs> Um, you know, what would I have done, um, Diane, when the gender reveal? I mean, we, we didn't find out what we were going to have. So, I mean, we're really old school, right? It seems to be the done thing now. I keep saying, when I eventually have a baby, I don't want to know. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Did your mother know that, that it was you? <laughs> no, she didn't find out. She didn't have a clue. She actually thought I was going to be a boy. Well, we were the same. We 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 thought Annie was going to be a girl, but we then we thought Sam was going to be a girl because the pregnancy was exactly the same. Oh, wow. I was. It was such a great day when when that happened, and we found out. Like, if I could tell anyone, don't worry about the children's room. There'll be plenty of time to put some colours up. <laughs> to me, the greatest thing in the world was to wait and just like, oh, what is it going to be? Oh. 
I love that we're talking about babies because we're going to have Jarina on the podcast in just a, a little while and we're going to be catching up with her to see how she's getting on with little baby AJ since he's been born. So, well, we're going to have this is a, a gushy, emotional, baby packed podcast today. <laughs> Oh, and we got a new cat, a new kitty cat, a ragamuffin oh. cat. That Lisa had to fly up to Chicago to pick up this ragamuffin cat. His name's Lovey. It's a girl oh, named Lovey. Oh, Lovey. So That's I've cute. never had a cat because I raise birds, and now I am a cat person. This little kitty is so sweet. Oh. Um, so, oh, my God, what am I talking about here? I Cats know. and babies. <laughs> now, um, to you? Yeah, Brittany Lang, yes. a U.S. Open champion, has been very quiet this year. What are we hearing about Brittany Lang? Has she had any form recently? Well, Brittany Lang's only actually made three cuts this year. Um, she's missed the last four cuts. So it hasn't been a great season for her. As you say, 2016, she won the U.S. Open. So she has a major under her belt already. And... We, we shot Brittany Lang's player channel. It's online at secretgolf.com. She is an incredible player. And Elk, you know this better than anyone. You just have years like that, don't you, where you, it's just hard to get it going. I certainly have. And, and, of course, you don't know what's going on with their family and what they're working on with their swing. But Brittany is such a good player. She has such, a, um, such an amount of lag in her swing, which almost guarantees she's going to hit it solid. So it's, I almost need to go see her to see what's going on with her because uh, – she uh, is so good, and I'm I'm uh, I'm hopeful that this summer she'll turn it around. She's told me she likes to play in the heat, so yeah. come on, Brittany. And then the other Brittany, Brittany Lincecum, she started the season with a win in the Bahamas. Since then, four top tens. She is going to be playing on the PGA Tour, the Barbasol, which runs the same week as the Open Championship. She's only going to be the fifth female ever to be, you know, invited to play in a PGA Tour event. We spoke to her on the podcast a few weeks ago, and she is well. She said that she's so nervous about it. She can't even begin to think about it right now because she's so nervous. But it, it has been a great year for Brittany Lincecum. And what, where do you think her mind is right now? You know, playing all in this event, obviously, um, and all the LPGA Tour events before she actually plays with the guys. Is she thinking about that right now or is her mind going to be fully on this major? I hope it's fully on this one because uh, she'll she'll get a lot more out of this, I think, than she will out of the Barbasol. Barbasol is a great sponsor it's one of the few sponsors that sponsor both the women and the ladies tour and i think it's good that uh they've invited her to play in the uh, in the tournament down there i mean um it's their choice a lot of people you know uh, they blow up when steph curry and tony romo got played but this is a, this is some real intrigue because i uh, honestly think that um well at secret golf we're going to start playing some some matches uh, between men and women. We're going to go back to some of these famous golf courses and play. And I can't wait to match up with the ladies because we hardly ever see it. So yeah. um, I'm curious. Uh, of course, when Annika Sorenstam did it at the Colonial, it was a perfect location for her to do it because I was also there when Michelle Wee uh, did it up in uh, the John Deere. So um, it's it's 50-50 with the men. Half of them are like, what the, what's she doing here? And the other 50 that are older uh, like me are like, well, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's see where they are. It's, it's, it's comparison. It's always good to see, uh, where the ladies game stacks up. She's one of the biggest sitters on the LPGA tour. So it's going to be interesting to see how that compares to the guys. Yeah, exactly. I think she flies the ball about 260 in the air, which, uh, would be on the low end of the tour, um, out on the, out on the PGA tour, but it's okay. I want, I want to see, I, I want to see what's going to happen. And, um, Look, the best thing going for Brittany Lynchicum, she has a great attitude. She's very, uh, she's very uh, relaxed. She plays in, uh, she plays in that Diamond Resorts event with the other, mm -hmm. with the men. So she's been at, she's been around, uh, you know, the guys a lot. So, hey, I like it. Like, I'll be watching that. She just took a bit of time off. She wanted to be at home for a couple of weeks and uh, and go fishing and spend time with her husband. So she is feeling fully refreshed and ready to go at the Women's PGA Championship this week. Yeah, I'm 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 going to be tuning into uh, Kemper Lakes. I want to see what the course is like. I want to remember what uh, uh, you know what I remember from '89. I want to think about Payne Stewart some more. His wife is Australian, Tracy. Um, their their family and and we we see them every year at the father son. So it, it was a it was an emotional time for the tour players that grew up with Payne and was around Payne and Tracy and the family, all of us and thinking about golf history and how it's all intertwined. And now that 
we're sort of involved with the LPGA, with the girls. It's uh, it, it all adds to the chapter of uh, what we're what we're seeing. Yeah, exactly. Right, Alec, thank you so much. Um, you enjoy your day today. What are you actually up to? I can tell that you're outside somewhere. I'm guessing it's a golf course. I'm working with, uh, working with my son, Sam, on his golf a little bit right now. We're working on a couple of things to uh, get him a little bit more consistent. So uh, I'm doing that, and which then, is what I really should be doing. Good, yeah, of course. And then this week on the, the PGA Tour, the guys are <laughs> at, well, it's the Quicken Loans National, and it's at... TPC, I never can say this right, Potomac. <laughs> yeah, that's close enough. Can you say that again? The whole thing again, that was so great. No, oh, uh, my gosh. No, Potomac. 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 I always get it confused. Potomac. Poto- it's Potomac. okay. Okay. Um, Avenel, nice course. Great to see Tiger up there uh, in action again this week. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. I, I think everybody's now starting to point towards the British Open. But, uh, mm-hmm. of course, when Tiger's in action... It's always exciting. And he's, uh, is he the host this week? Yeah, he's the host. Um, it benefits his charitable foundation. So it's a big event for Tiger. And uh, it's going to be a great week. It's just going to be a great week of golf viewing all week, really. And where's your brother? Yeah, it will be. Where's your brother? Is he playing? He, no, he actually flew to France. Um, he's doing European tour for a few weeks now. So he's going to do the French Open, then the Irish Open, Scottish Open, and then uh, the Open Championship. So he is going to be overseas for the next month or so, I guess. Okie dokie. Well, that's, uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing from you, of course, at the British Open. I know you're going back and you'll be able to eat all your crazy food like this like the uh, cow stomach and all that stuff yeah yeah one of my friends said to me the other day of what are you most excited about having when you're over here and i said i really want a good chinese meal i feel like the chinese food in scotland is so good and i'm very excited about that randomly you're so you scottish people are so odd they're so odd that's why i think i like them so much at least i admit it (laughs) exactly right el thank you so much we'll talk to you again next week thank you diane I feel like that's a little bit of a backhanded compliment, but um, I'll take it, especially when it comes to the weird traditions with Scottish eating. I'm really excited about having, and this is quite a strange thing, but haggis in like a, a roll, like a breakfast roll with a potato scone. I don't know if you get potato scones in America. I haven't found them yet anyway. But yeah, it's basically just like a little flat potato cake that you fry and then putting that with haggis and ketchup in a roll and having it for breakfast. That's what I'm excited about. I fly to Scotland in less than two weeks. So when I'm there, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of one and get it on my Twitter. It's not the healthiest start to the day, but it's delicious. Anyway, so Jarena Pillar, she had her first baby back in April, little AJ. And well, she's at home right now, rightly so. She's taking a, a break from golf. You know, she said all along that she will get back to the LPGA Tour eventually, and I'm sure she really does miss it. But right now, she is spending time at home with her family and her new son. So Jarina's here now. Are you and AJ having a, a relaxing day together? You might hear a little baby in there, but that's okay. It's a no, I like that. Life and <laughs> he's, he's definitely a talker, so well, he's, he's done eating. We're just hanging out, and he's... He took a big old nap this morning, so he's awake and ready to, to hang out. So. Oh, good. Well, first of all, congratulations. We've been texting back and forth on Instagram and everything, but um, oh, this is the first time that we've properly spoken and I've been so excited about catching up. Are you loving every second of it? Um, yes, it has been. Um, it's just been amazing. Obviously, it's tiring, which everyone knows that, but um, <laughs> those, you know, waking up in the morning and, you know, talking to him and him just smiling at you. It just, it doesn't matter if you got one minute of sleep or five minutes of sleep, just to have him smile at you is, is pretty awesome. And, and, um, it's been, it's been just great. I, mm-hmm. I love being a mom and, and, uh, you know, I, I, I know I could probably speak the same for Martin. Um, he's been away on some golf tournaments and, um, you know, I've never, I've never seen him or, talk never see him talk or text or anything like constantly it's you know what is AJ doing you know I miss y'all so much and and so he is definitely um (laughs) loving being a dad and and you know I try to send him as many many pictures as I can during the day and 
And uh, he's like, I just, I feel like I don't have a life. All I do is sit and <laughs> look at pictures AJ. And I said, well, you do have a life. It's, it is him. <laughs> exactly. This is your life. <laughs> your life now. It's funny, my best friend had a baby last year and she'd been with her husband for years, but she said, you you love them like your partner in a whole different way once you have a baby together. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you definitely. And it's just, it's a, it's just a miracle to, you know, to think just like six weeks ago, he was in my stomach and now he's in my arms and it's, it's incredible. How's it been for Martin? Because obviously it was the week of the Zura Classic that AJ was born. Martin pulled out. He got there just in time. But he's he had to get back out on the road fairly quickly. So how was it for him leaving? Did he find it really difficult? Um, the first time going, I think, uh, I want to say he went to Charlotte. Um, he didn't leave until Wednesday. And he obviously ended up mi- uh, missing the cut. So it was a very short trip. Mm-hmm. Um and then it was perfect because the next week, I think he had off because of the players. And then uh-huh. the following two, he played the Byron, which is here in town, and then Colonial as well. Um, and the hardest part was that weekend of uh, Colonial, my little brother, he, is, uh, he just graduated high school. And I have four brothers and sisters, and I've never missed one of their graduations. And oh. so... Um, we drove, uh, me and my younger sister drove to New Mexico to go to his graduation, having to leave Martin. And that was really, really tough. I always have, a, a tr- I always have trouble leaving Martin. Um, but for some reason that one was just tougher. Um, and I, I just, I felt bad. Like I was almost taking, um, AJ away from him and going <laughs> to see my family. Um, but he was able to come back, um, Let's see, Monday night, um, he tried to qualify for the US Open and missed it. So he flew back Monday night, Mm -hmm. and then he flew out to um, Memphis Wednesday morning. Um, So he was able to come back for um, a day um, just to hang out with us. So um, it's been, you know, it's been a little challenging, I think. Uh, But we're very blessed and lucky that his first couple of events after the birth was here in town, and he got to spend money, you know, he was in town. Um, however, I met him, made him sleep upstairs in the media room uh, <laughs> just so that he got some sleep. Because I know, you know, if we, AJ wakes up two to three times a night to, to feed. And, you know, I didn't want Martin to feel obligated to feel like he needed to be up with us because I was up. So yeah. it, was, it was still like almost an away game. Yeah, well, because Martin, had, he posted some great scores in that tournament. And I actually heard him say in an interview, well, you know, Jarena said that I had to sleep alone this week. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was he was uh, kicked out of the bedroom and had to go upstairs. So, yeah. um, you know, if if he wants to kick me out of the room and let me sleep a full night, um, <laughs> I won't be opposed to that either. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you and Martin have had this your whole relationship. You know, you've been playing on the LPGA tour. He was on the Web dot com, and now the PGA tour. So you're used to the separation and the travel side of things. But now that there's a third person involved, of course it's going to be trickier, and of course you're going to have that emotional side of things where you don't want to be apart. Oh, for sure. You know, and it's going to be really hard. You know, once I start to travel and play. Um, next year where you know I can obviously travel with him but at the same side like I'm going to be taking him away from Martin and he won't be able to see him so um, that's definitely going to take a role and impact in how much I play and where I play I don't know if I'll do much um, out of out of the country travel I might just do maybe a domestic schedule Mm -hmm. but um, it'll definitely be challenging next year. The thing is, is that, you know, there's um, a lot of people on the LPGA tour who have kids and I'm sure, you know, you see them juggle both. And I'm sure you've had some great advice from people as to how to arrange your schedule and manage your time. Yeah, you know, Julie's been a really big help um, in just being encouraging about, you know, you can you can have a family on tour. And obviously, um, I don't know if you know, but the PGA tour has a daycare and the LPGA. And so that um, for us it's sponsored by Smuckers and for us to have that, um, is definitely, definitely made that, um, transition to motherhood a lot easier and made it possible for moms to, um, continue to play. And, and, you know, like if you think about it, you know, we're, we're a tour and we're big on, um, you know, um, 
just providing for the future and yes. and the future of golf. And to be honest, like my son could is the future of golf. Um, exactly. And so um, it plays a huge role in, into um, our tour and allowing us to be able to be a mom and to still compete and play. Mm -hmm. the thing that must be quite difficult and as I said before you know I've got a lot of friends that have kids and I see it firsthand and they always say you know once you have a baby your schedule goes completely out the window and I guess you know being a golfer you've always run a tight ship in that sense too so is it weird not having that day-to-day kind of set schedule now (laughs) um yes and no to be honest um you know with golf it's kind of run a tight ship but things kind of vary you have variables you know you have different pro-am times every week you have different tea times every week you have rain mm-hmm. delays okay um, stuff. but as far as like a baby like you absolutely do the same thing every day all day long you know <laughs> it's, like, it's like groundhog day and you know whereas golf kind of is the same way we still have a little variation and you know we may play late one day or mm-hmm. one week we might have you know, delays where we play late every day. So whereas we're doing the same thing, essentially it has a little variables to it, but you're raising a kid. I feel like it's just like, uh, (laughs) same thing, change the diaper, feed him, put him to sleep, wake up, change his diaper, feed him. You know, it, it just, (laughs) same thing over and over and over and over again. (laughs) Oh, that is amazing. That's so funny. Um, Of course, Stacey Lewis is pregnant now as well. So um, have you spoken to Stacey? Do you guys kind of keep in touch and, and, you know, other, other expectant mothers or other mothers on tour? Um, Yeah, we've kept in touch. Um, We weren't able to see her, but we stayed with um, her husband um, during the Houston Shell Open. And then, um, during the tournament here in Dallas, the week after I'd had him, um, Stacy came over to visit. So that was really nice catching up with her. And, mm. you know, it's it's kind of crazy it's, as much as you're just kind of sitting around the house taking care of a kid. You don't have much time to, to text or email or stuff. So every now and then when I think of her, I'll send her a text, just check it on her, see if she's feeling okay. Aww. And, and uh, cause I know how it is when you're out there trying to play and, you know, I went into it. I'm like, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm a, uh, I'm an athlete. And, you know, once I get pregnant, I feel like I can play for a while. And, and that was a different story. You, just, <laughs> you know, your, your body's changing your hormones, your energy level. Um, you just have like no stamina. I know when wow. I put, when I try to play, so I definitely feel, um, what she's going through. And, you know, I felt like some of the times playing in the tournaments, I had signs of greatness. And then there's other times that I'd hit a shot and I'd just look at my caddy like, where the heck did that come from? <laughs> that is so funny. That is amazing. It's a miracle. The more you think about it, it's an absolute miracle what our bodies can do. It, it, it is. I mean, you know, to go from um, playing golf every day, you know, doing my own thing to, um, I remember the first time I got pregnant and... I had this app and it said, you know, he went from the size of a poppy seed to a sesame seed. And I was so excited that he had grown that much. And now I'm holding an over 10 pound baby. And it's just like, that is a miracle. Just to think um, that he started out that small and here he is just perfect in my eyes with, you know, great health and, and really good lungs. (laughs) Really good lungs. Good. (laughs) Have you swung a club at all since he's been born? I have not. No. <laughs> I'm sure that is the furthest no. thing from your mind right now. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been I've been keeping up with the tour just because my friends, um, you know, obviously are still competing and mm-hmm. and uh, just want to stay up with um, the tour. And um, I'm currently still serving on the LPJ board, so I try to stay somewhat involved as much as I can. Um, but as far as swinging. Um, I just got released from my doctor about two weeks ago to okay. start working out. So, um, well, when that hopefully get some time in to um, head to the gym and, and start wake, work, working my way back to um, a pre-pregnancy um, golf body, I guess yeah, you could I know, say. exactly. I'm sure there's no rush at all. And obviously with Martin on the PGA Tour, I'm sure you have watched more PGA Tour golf recently than you ever have in your life. Have you been keeping up with, you know, sitting down on the couch and watching him on TV? 
Um, for sure. You know, obviously they have the um, shot tracker, which is great. Um, it's kind of like watching him on TV. Um, but, you know, it was great the last couple months before um, I was bound to the house due to, uh, you know, airplane, airplane uh, mm-hmm. regulations. Where you can't fly till you're 36 weeks pregnant. Um, you know, I got to travel with him and, and kind of be that tour wife and, and, as much as, you know, I was taking a break from my golf, I was still at the golf course. So um, I really enjoyed um, just being out there and supporting him. And, and uh, that, you know, 5 o'clock, 4.30 alarms going off. It was felt real good to realize that it, was, it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> you can back over. Was, yeah, I just needed to put on some clothes and a hat, and I was looking <laughs> forward to breakfast. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, and you said that your your mum was actually down staying with you last week. So I take it your family have been there for you a lot and you've probably got to spend more quality time with them, you know, since AJ's been born too. Um, yes, I my mom, she is a PE teacher um, for the elementary school in New Mexico and I just got out of school and uh, she didn't really get to spend a whole lot of time with us when he was born just because he went to the NICU for a couple of days after mm-hmm. And they had to get back to New Mexico for work, her and my dad. And so she was able to come for almost a week. And I could not say enough um, about my mom. Obviously, before I had become a mom, but now that I am a mom, um, I am just so grateful for her and every mom that's out there. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just, it just goes tons of work unnoticed. And um, I was so grateful that she was able to come and help me for those few days and um we were definitely sad to see her leave yesterday morning oh that's a shame I think for this whole interview I've had a smile on my face and tears in my eyes because it is it's such an amazing thing it's life-changing but in just the best possible way ever it it is you know it I've always wanted I've always wanted to be a mom and um you know I think being a a female professional athlete especially Mm -hmm. um it it kind of, I think, puts some of the girls and women in a tough spot because, um, you know, there's some, some time that I felt that the urge, obviously that I wanted to be a mom. And it was like, I didn't want to feel like I was putting my career, um, to the side or, um, Mm -hmm. just quitting what I worked hard for or anything like that. But, you know, I feel like, um, golf is, um, definitely what I do and not who I am and I think when I have once I had a kid you know a mother is what is who I am that's that's who I'll be for the rest of my life and um, it just really puts things into perspective and where I still love to compete and I can't wait um, to get back out there Um, and you know one day I cannot wait to take AJ to the the driving range into the golf course and kind of show him um, what his his mommy and daddy do every day. I know, exactly. Well, he sounds excited about that already, (laughs) making his little noises. (laughs) Uh, well, Janina, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me because it's just amazing. We're over the moon delighted for you and Martin and um, oh, just so excited for everything that's to come. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me and, and hope to see you guys soon and uh, can't wait to get back out there and, and hit some balls. <laughs> Excellent. And when Martin's home, make sure you tell him hi from us and enjoy your time together as a family of three. All right, I will. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Have Serena. a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh, it's so nice. I do. I feel all emotional now. Elk talking about babies earlier and Jarina and it's very, very sweet. Couldn't be happier for Jarina and for Martin as well. Now, if you're missing Jarina in the golfing world, which of course we are, then you can go and check out her player channel at secretgolf.com. It's funny, I actually went and watched loads of it the other day. Jarina, we filmed with her for a full day in Texas and you can go and learn about every aspect of her game. She crushes the ball. I love watching Jarina's driver swings in slow motion. But yeah, it's all online, secretgolf.com, all of our player channels too.
Thank you so much for listening. Really excited for this week's KPMG Women's PGA Championship. Good luck to our five secret golf women in the field. We'll, of course, be keeping track with their scores and um, we'll do updates on all of our social media as well. We're at Secret Golf on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, so you can go and follow along. Have a great rest of week and weekend and we'll be back with another podcast for you next week.